everybody and welcome back to another episode in Chinatown and I know we haven't been back to this series in a while but here we are at last coming back uh, to this series which nobody watches and I took some advice from a subscriber telling me to take a break be reinvigorated and do better with this series so after a long long break away we are back to do the interior of our sushi shop as we continue in this Chinatown project. Now that is what I'm working on on screen, but while I'm talking about other things, let me just fill you in on what is happening here. So, uh, we played around with an interior previously where we had decided to um, put a conveyor belt sushi restaurant inside this building and we had some problems trying to line up the conveyor belt because obviously I wanted everyone or the majority of people to be able to serve from the uh, the conveyor belt from seated position. Um, so by putting a, a conveyor belt across the middle, that would be the easiest way to do it. But the problem is we have two passenger entry doors and um, if you have two passenger entry doors, where are you going to store your kitchen? But if you want to check out that failed version, I recommend checking out the other part of Chinatown. We also did a lot of other building in that video, which was um, a lot of fun. Um, but currently I am playing around with the new design which is to have a central sushi island in the middle where um, people get served from. But if you're wondering what we're doing here, um, hi, uh, my name's Octane. We're doing a Chinatown mock build series. So basically I'm taking all of the Eastern inspired sets like the Chinese New Year set and eventually Ninjago City and we're going to be merging them into one big district here in the studio. Now that means custom modular buildings, mods of modular buildings, extra sets being turned into modular buildings, some street work, and um, lots of other fun Easter eggs. So hi, I recommend you sticking around, um, going back and watching the other parts, as um, this is a series I hope to have finished before the end of 2022, which seems like a long way off, but trust me, when you're building something this big, it really isn't. Um, but anyway, back to what we're actually doing. The next job for today is to work out some table layouts and we're going to be doing these um, tables, as I said, in connection with our big unit here in the centre and um, we're going to be using black tables and then uh, with some brown lids. Not to mention we're actually got this central unit here and the top of that central unit is grey to represent our conveyor belt. It's not quite using the grill plates like I'd originally hoped but um, hey-ho, what can you do? Next up, we are. Um, I've already gone and added in all the seats. Now, the reason I did this off-camera is because it was really, really painful. Um, you would not think some angles would be as painful as they are, but I had to try and make these tables work with where they're going to be seated, and as we build them, I'll talk you through them. But currently, I am just adding um, some supports underneath our central unit because it's on an angle. It means that it needs some support under there besides the turntable, so I added some 2x2 two two, uh, grey tiles. However, I think our floor is going to be a wood panel floor, so I think we're going to go for dark tan. So, all of these jumper plates and studded pieces are representing where our tables and chairs are going to go in this room. That means that once they're done, we can fill in the gaps and add in all of the rest of the flooring. But I thought it was a good idea to position and um, plan out the units before we go, and then we can just add some table legs and that will be done. So it's actually a symmetrical build, meaning that we can just do whatever we do on the, uh, the left, we can do on the right. And you'll notice that the jumper plates are corresponding to these rounded plates, and those are going to be our chairs. Now it's just a case of filling in all the gaps around the edges and making sure every flooring that we can see is in the dark tan colouring. And then we can start to fill in all the gaps using plates. There are a couple of other seating areas we have, um, specifically where there are either just um, chairs with no tables, and there are going to be two tables in the two far corners, so you'd actually have to get up to be served. But this central unit is the equivalent of our kitchen, and um, it's sort of just a walk-in restaurant, and then um, the plates will be coloured as if you can play for them, but we'll get to that later. So, here I'm adding a massive section of flooring, getting rid of that green, which I think makes the build look a lot more finished. I think this dark tan works really nicely with the sand green and brown colour scheme of the walls, um, as well as the aqua on the outside. However, that has more to do with the upper floors, uh, but we'll get to that later. That outer walling is actually going to be a bit of a struggle, but that's not for now. Next up, we have to try and find some panelling techniques to work with this edge here as um, it's actually quite a difficult angle to do, made specifically more difficult by the extensions I added. Uh, but this step down here, we need to have a flush gap. So um, I think that's really important that we sort out. So I'm trying to use pentagonal tiles, but what I don't quite realise yet is that pentagonal tiles don't actually come in dark tan. Um, we'll work that out in a minute. 
Um, and yeah, uh, we're going from there. We're basically trying to hide all the gaps so that we can progress with the build. Now that technically hides all the gaps with some raised edges, but I think it looks pretty ugly. So I think we're gonna have to find another method. I think one of the easiest ways would be to remove the cheese slopes over on the right, uh, but we'll get there in a minute. So if pentagonal tiles don't work, what is the solution? Well, I believe we're actually gonna have to add in some studs, but maybe that's an all right thing for minifigure posing. So I think we're, um, we'll be using some wedge plates, I think. Also, I decided to extend the step, and while that's an even more awkward shape, I think it does overall work better. Now here what we can do is use some tiles and some small bits like that, and uh, then that should line up perfectly with the edge once we find some pieces that are available in dark tan. In fact, this small wedge, the last piece I actually expected to be available in this colour, is actually a colour that is available. <laughs> um, also, now, while I'm here, I'll bring up that one light grey piece in the middle. Um, I think I'm going to change that colour when we go over to studio, just into dark tan. I'm alright with it being raised to hide the gap, that's more important, but I think it looks even worse in light bluish grey. So when we go and take a look at the model in detail, I think I'll go change that. But we're, right now, we are currently filling in all of the small little gaps, and voila, we have a dark, um, a dark tan floor. So now it's time to go back to the tables, and I think the first job is to add some uh, table feet in. Now, if we're doing bar stools, so that means that these bar stools are going to be on telescopes, I think our tables in the corner are going to have to be specifically high. But I think that's an okay compromise for what we're trying to do. Our um, seats are going to be orange padded, wooden seats with uh, the black like iron or wooden uh, painted uh, stalks. And now what we're going to be doing is adding in the tables that need to be flush or just a bit lower than the conveyor belt. So we're going to lower those down, so telescopes on one plate, and that should bring it down to the same level as the unit, meaning um, that they're not strangely high, which would be really weird. And then these seats are obviously going to have to be lower, so we're just going to put them on one by one cylinder bricks. However, when I can, I'm going to prefer to use the telescope legs like these two around here, which mean you're sat at the same height as the bar, but I think that's fine. You can almost imagine that they're telescopic stools and that these people would prefer to be up high. It's all going to depend when you put minifigures in here, and that's something that becomes a lot harder with studio. And I've also just extended the table line on the other side so that these people here have something to actually eat on, or else um, they'd just be sat there trying to eat in their laps, which I imagine would be no fun whatsoever. So we're almost done with our stool lids now, and I think it's actually looking a lot more colourful, and I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. I think the next step is to work on our kitchen, which is a nice easy win for us, um, where we can add a bit more colour and then we can start working on the plates and then before we know it this interior will be done. Now I'm not sure how much of the exterior I'm going to get done today, it's a pretty complicated build that I'm not too big a fan of at the moment. The, the problem with this build as a whole is our Chinatown has got to fit a normal skyscraper vibe but at the same time look oldie oldie on the inside just like any other Chinatown. But um, before we have to worry about that, we've got to deal with these uh, ovens and such. So this is our kitchen unit. It's going to be small and cramped, and we're going to want lots of chopping boards and ovens and storage containers and stuff. So what I'm doing here is I've set up where I want my oven range to be. I'm going to add a little like wall to stop people from, I don't know, what's the word, um, sticking their hands in fire. That seems more obvious now that I say it. And I think we're going to be using medium nougat as our accent colour for a lot of um, these kitchen appliances. I'm going to extend that... Uh, uh, shielding out a bit further. I think that's a bit too long, but I'll change it in a minute. And um, then we'll prepare a chopping board, a crate, we'll put some more barrels and such over the other side, and um, it was starting to be developing. There we go, that looks a lot better. It's not blocking the actual conveyor belt. And uh, now we can finish in adding in the last of the units. It's a very nice and on display kitchen, meaning that uh, the customers can actually see what's going on, which I think is quite nice. We've got a little barrel in there. We can put some ingredients like some fish or some like, leaves and stuff in there. Add our oven doors. We'll add some flames and some teapots and kettles and pots and pans and such. Add a little cauldron down on the floor. Might add something into that in a minute. Saucepan out on the boil and a frying pan on the other side. Not to mention, let's add some flames, let's make this look like an extreme flame, like a flambe kitchen or something. Over the other side, I think we'll add a weapon rack. Weapon rack, I mean um, utensils rack. <laughs> that sounds a bit better. We'll add a cleaver, and then I think I'll add another 1x4 tile and medium nougat on the top uh, for a bit of extra decoration. Let's just fine adjust something into the cauldron, more specifically a stud meant to represent water. And then over here in this basket, I think um, we'll add some little vegetables and stuff. But before we get there, we'll add a fish to the barrel and we'll go search for some more utensils. I'm thinking a spoon, 
maybe. Uh, we're also going to add some bowls and some chalices to the table. And um, these are Ninjago movie bowls, which are actually hard, quite hard to get hold of, but I will find a way. We're also going to recolor these cha cha um, chalices later. But I guess these are more like your soup bowls or something, and then we'll have our actual sushi plates um, in a minute. We've added a couple of different tools to that rack there, all in like the gunmetal grey colours. And now I'm just going to add these flower pieces meant to represent ingredients. I'm sort of taking inspiration from the Chinese New Year Temple first set, uh, where they had those barbecue sticks, but these ones are going to be a bit more of a different palette. We're also going to modify this chopping board so that we can have a butcher's knife on the chopping board. And then over here, we'll just leave that one plain, which I think will look nice. We're also going to have to change out a couple of the bits of the conveyor belt to attempt to make our sushi plates, which we're going to do on stamp pieces with inverted tiles. And unfortunately, it is going to wreck the smooth looking nature of it. But I think because of the size of the plates, it should hide it pretty well. And I think that's OK compromise. Um, so I'm just going to play around with some options that hopefully will work and then we can add some more sushi plates. Uh, we're going to start off making them all blue, but I'm going to change the colours to some other colours uh, to hopefully make them work. I, I think that just about works. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I think that covers it. Add some plates over here. We've got a spoon in the kitchen already. I think we'll go with lavender and green. So these would represent different prices or different meals. I, I think we'll go with prices. So um, each plate represents a price and therefore... Um, you pay different amounts based on which plates you eat and you can eat obviously as many as you like as long as you pay for them I think we'll do the glasses or the chalices in silver and our teacups in white and our bowls in white and I think that adds a really nice spice of colour so I'm not actually going to fill the plates here but when we go and take a look at the modeling studio they will be filled we're actually going to do a bit more work on the outside which I'm not too big of a fan of and I don't think I'm going to fix it permanently today there's actually quite a lot of changes I want to make to this I'm going to have to do some more research on some architectural styles um, but in between there we can still make a start and see if we can find something that we like. So we're going to be raising up the two windows because I think they were too close together. Preferably not that tall because that's actually a bit far for my liking and it's taller than the other side over the other side. I think my modular windows are getting just a tad too tall. Um, but besides that we're just going to add um, a little decoration piece in the middle using some snot work and some round one by one cylinders. Preferably we might go for some squares actually because I know those come in the light aqua colour which is actually a really difficult colour to work with as I mentioned before because of how little pieces there are in said colour. Now we're going to add some black tiles to the middle which may seem like a strange choice initially but I wanted something that pops or we could add signage to. However, maths be maths and that's not going to let me attach that there so we're going to have to do them separately. So we can have two 2x6 two tiles, maybe some 2x2 two two tiles. I really want that gap to join up in the middle. So I think we're going to have to do something just a little bit different. Maybe we'll add some black pieces there and then some tiles. I think we can change those out for 4x4s. Four four actually, that are 2x4s even. That makes it look a bit better. And I'm just going to experiment on this side. So you're going to have to let me know what you guys think of this one down below. I'm going to do some more research and I can almost guarantee it will change before the next time. Um, but that's the joy of Chinatown. <laughs> it's always going to be changing until I'm happy with it. And this is a series that I am actually enjoying at the moment. Um, hopefully I'm going to get out a couple more episodes. So I hope someone finds it interesting. I can't wait for us to get to the Ninjago City side of things. Because I've got loads and loads of plans and I really want to see them come together. It's just going to be difficult for me to actually make the Ninjago City models in studio. Because I kind of have to hand make them. Which is a really difficult thing to do. I really wish Mechabricks, which has an active set rebuilder community, had a... Um, conversion um, that could actually go to studio but I think because they're competitors they've deliberately avoided it um, which is a real shame because as far as I'm aware no one's been able to successfully replicate the Ninjago City Dots and Gardens um, in a studio file yet because for some reason no one does that and I don't understand why um, anyway but that's a different kind of complaint <laughs> Um, so, leaving that there, there's a couple more bits I want to focus on today, most importantly being finishing off the ATM room. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend checking it out. A lot of cool details built into that one, including a Venom Easter egg in our um, lot fancy restaurant, which is actually next to this one. As well as um, my favourite part of the street, which is actually the Chinatown interior, whether this is sort of like the Chinatown facade. Um, anyway, besides the point, I left this wall unfinished last time, but before I start building up sushi walls any further, I kind of wanted to fill this in. So, just a quick little job here before we finish off and go take a look at the model in studio. I wanted to fill in these gaps and get it tiled off. Now, that's going to be an interesting project for the future because it's as a floor, it's going to 
be different. It's going to modify, and um, that's an interesting challenge for us to overcome in a future video. Um, but we'll get there, we'll get there. This is sort of like a facade section. But as I said, if you want to learn more about this section, go and check out that video. Um, besides that, I'm really pleased with how it's coming. Uh, we just got to tile off the top, and then I think we'll be done for the day. And um, yeah, uh, and we'll go take a look at the model in studio, and I'll show you all of the finished food layouts for our um, sushi shop. Right, so here we are in studio, and we're viewing this from the street side, so like the one where it's supposed to look somewhat normal. Well, I say normal as if Chinatown's a bad aesthetic, so it's a lovely aesthetic. I mean, not like um, a, almost New York-y street style. So we've got our ATM over here, and then we've got our new building, and I'm definitely not entirely happy with what's going on here. So there's definitely some, some more changes to be made, but what they are, I do not know yet. I'll have to do some work in between. But without looking and spending too much time on that facade, I think we're going to take a look at this lovely interior today. Now, I don't want to spend too long on this because you've already seen it at great length and there's no need to show it off again. But really, something big has changed and that here has to be the addition of the foods. Now, wow, doesn't that add just a little bit of color and make it sparkle that extra uh, little bit? And I actually really love what's going on here. So our kitchen remained relatively unchanged. The only thing changed from the time lapse is a couple of small things and then obviously the food on the plates. So our blue ones, I reckon, are our cheapest of the three plates or maybe the middle plates. And you've got some like representations, maybe these um, salmon or like sushi rolls and stuff. And then you've got like little lettuce leaves or um, kale or, or spinach or something. I don't know. You've got like this bright and colorful platter and you've got a half eaten one over here. Now, our other variation for the blue pr uh, price of food is this one here, which is using some metallic silver, which I guess is some like uh, fish with its skin still on. And then you've got some different kind of vegetables, maybe they're potatoes or flowers or chips or something. I, I really, really don't know, but I think they look colorful. It's a nice combination. And I've actually stacked this plate on top of each other. I'm not sure why, but I think it looks better. And um, those are our blue plums. Then we've also got the purple ones, where there are another two combinations of food. You can see here that this one's got something like lettuce on it, or some spring rolls or something, like, or some like um, shredded lettuce or something. I don't know. You've got some nice colourful. I really wanted to use that spring yellow colour. And you've got some over here, some over here, and some over here. This one again, half eaten, it's been stacked. And then our other purple one, we have another two of, and these are the more traditional sushi ones, sort of inspired by the Ninjago City sushi bar, but also not. Um, you've got like black and white here, more like your actual sushi roll, and then you've got the orange ones as well. And there's two of those plates, both of which are full and going around the conveyor belt. And then the last color we have, we actually have the least of, and that is this one here, which is actually different now. It's been turned upside down. So this is the uh, two by two with one stud in the middle uh, in uh, line, uh, olive green. And we've actually put an ice cream topper on. So that could be like a, I don't know, pudding, dumpling, ice cream. And we've got one in light aqua over here and we've got one in pink. And then we've got what is supposed to be a half eaten one over in the corner uh, where it is just a stud. Uh, it's upside down again. And I think that works really nicely switching between the two sides. Adds a bit of variation instead of just using stud collections. And I think that looks nice. Now, my favorite view for this building is actually through our little window where it just looks so bright and colorful and it works really, really well. And I'm really looking forward to like modifying this side so that it works even better for us. And um, that's what I'm going to do now. So before we finish, I just wanted to turn back into our Chinatown side, which is by far my favorite side. And I wanted to think about how we're going to improve this. Now, one of my big goals um, for next week, I think, is not only to get this facade finished, but to actually get some more floors and, and stuff up. So by the end of next week, I'm hoping that we have two more floors over on these two and then maybe we can get the facade of this building built up even further i've got some inspiration for that one but i really can't do it until we finish this so that's got to be my first goal but i'm really glad that the interior is done i'm glad that i took a break and now we're back uh, to finish chinatown and we're here with a vengeance we've got a lot lot more work to do but this isn't the entire model i've had to section it off to keep studio from crashing but um, I hope you enjoyed this little look into it and that you're looking forward to seeing what comes from this series. Because remember, the more support uh, we have on this series, the quicker we get through it. And the quicker we get through Chinatown, the quicker we get to the next mock or large mock series on the channel, which I've got some interesting options lined up for that. We may even run two simultaneously. But until then, consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And let me know what you thought of this episode of Chinatown down below. Let's aim for five views, you know, well, let's aim low. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.